Amen. All right, well, we're there in uh, Hebrews chapter number 6. And like we've been announcing, tonight we are starting a brand new series entitled Declaring Doctrine. And we're going to spend uh, many weeks on Sunday nights just going through a systematic study of uh, the Word of God. And we're going to look at some major doctrines in the Bible. And uh, I hope you'll, you'll come. I hope you'll take notes on the back of your course of the week. There's a place for you to write notes down. And uh, because this is going to be very much a study, you know, sometimes people go to Bible college and they'll take a Bible doctrines course that'll be required. And of course, we don't agree with Bible college and those things. But this this might feel like that uh, tonight as we and on Sunday nights as we study this out. And I want to begin with just kind of an introductory uh, sermon entitled "The Importance of Doctrine." And we want to talk about why even study, why even spend uh, week after week studying major doctrines in the Bible. And let me begin by just answering this question. What is doctrine? What is doctrine? Now, you're there in Hebrews chapter 6, and I'd like you to look down at verse number 1. The Bible says this, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. I want you to notice there's a doctrine of Christ here mentioned. And of course, uh, the writer here is saying that people are leaving these principles. And he says, but there's a doctrine of Christ. Let us go into perfection, not laying again the foundation. So I want you to notice that he's talking about the doctrine, but then he says that this is the foundation of, and then he mentions several major doctrines here, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Then in verse 2, he says of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this is not a comprehensive list of every doctrine in the Bible, but here he gives us examples of these are doctrines that we believe because we believe them from the Word of God. There's a doctrine of baptism. There's a doctrine of laying on of hands. There's a doctrine of the resurrection. There's a doctrine of eternal judgment. There's a doctrine of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. And, of course, that would fall under the doctrine of salvation. And when it comes to doctrine, you know, when we want to begin tonight by just answering this question, what is doctrine? Just a simple definition is this. Doctrine is a belief, or doctrines, plural, is a set of beliefs that comes from the Word of God or the Bible. If you look up the word doctrine in the dictionary, you'll find this de uh, definition, a belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a group. Now, when we're talking about Bible doctrines, we would say that group is a church, but there are political groups and all sorts of different types of groups that have doctrines or that have beliefs. But when we say doctrine, and when we're talking about doctrine, we're talking about a teaching that comes, and for us as New Testament believers, from the Word of God. We're going to be learning biblical doctrines from the Bible. Now, we also need to answer this question. I'd like you to keep your place there in Hebrews. We're going to leave it, and we're going to come back to it throughout the sermon, so I'd like you to be able to get to it quickly, if you would. But go up into the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, in the New Testament, first book in the New Testament should be fairly easy to find. Matthew chapter 7. So just by way of introduction, and we're going to look at a lot of passages tonight. Like I said, it's very much going to be a... Uh, a topical Bible study, and we're going to be looking at a lot of passages, so be ready to flip in your Bible and, and be, take notes and all of that. But we want to start by answering this question, what is doctrine? What is doctrine? And it is a set of beliefs that come from the Bible. And then we would answer this question, or I'd like to answer this question for you, is why should we care about doctrine? You, know, you might be thinking, Pastor Jimenez, why should I show up on Sunday nights and learn about all these major doctrines from the Bible uh, that we're going to be covering over the next several weeks? Why care about doctrine? And the answer to that is this. As you study the life and ministry of Christ, you'll find that in the Bible, and you may have not ever noticed this, and maybe you'll notice it as you read your nine chapters a day, but uh, you may have never noticed this, but in the Gospels and in the ministry of Christ specifically, there is an emphasis upon His teaching of doctrine. Matthew chapter 7, are you there? Now, if, 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 you, if, you, if you've read the book of Matthew, you know that chapters 5, 6, and 7 are that famous Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus taught, and he ends that sermon with the application of the wise man versus the foolish man. But at the end of that sermon, I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 28, Matthew 7, 28. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, when Jesus had ended his sermon, the people were astonished. The word astonished means they were greatly surprised, impressed, amazed. Notice, at his doctrine. The people were astonished at his doctrine. Verse 29, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So I want you to notice that Jesus 
was known in his ministry for he, he taught parables. And we know the parables were a big part of his ministry, and he's often known for that. But the Bible tells us that he not only taught parables, but he taught doctrine. He taught biblical truths from the Word of God, and he did it having authority. He did it with authority. He didn't apologize for what the Bible said. He just preached and he declared Doctrine. You're there in Matthew. Go to Mark chapter number 4. Mark chapter 4, just the next book over in the New Testament. You have Matthew, and then you've got the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, and look at verse number 1. Mark chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says this, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude by the sea on the land. Notice verse 2. And he taught them many things by parables. Now notice, he's teaching parables, and said unto them, because the parables were really just a way or a tool to be able to teach what he was trying to get, which was notice, and said unto them in his doctrine. So we see that Jesus, in Matthew 7, he taught uh, doctrine. The people were astonished at his doctrine because he taught it having authority. Then we see here in Mark 4 that even as he taught parables, and he told stories that were entertaining, he was teaching them doctrine. Go to Mark chapter 11. You're there in Mark 4. Just flip a few pages over. Mark chapter 11. Look at verse number 18. Mark 11, 18. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw it how they might destroy him. I want you to notice, these are the enemies of Jesus, and they want to kill him. They want to put him to death. They're, they're trying to figure out how they might destroy them, destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was astonished, right? What does that mean? Surprised, impressed, amazed, notice, at his doctrine. Did you realize that the Bible teaches that one of the reasons that the scribes and the Pharisees even crucified the Lord Jesus Christ was because they did not like his doctrine. They did not like what he was teaching. So you might think to yourself, well, doctrine is not that big of a deal. Doctrine seems kind of boring. This kind of seems like a boring Sunday night series. I don't know if I want to come back for this. Well, listen, doctrine is what we believe, truths that we believe, teaching from the Word of God. And you say, well, why should I care about doctrines? Well, number one, because it mattered to Christ, it should matter to us. But do you realize that it was so important to Christ, he preached doctrine that was not popular, doctrine that was not accepted, that it even got him crucified? And you know, today, even today, Verity Baptist Church has had persecution. We've had uh, 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 individuals and, and people that have attacked us and attacked our church. And, they don't, and you say, oh, they don't like your preaching about homosexuality. They don't like the fact that you don't allow a bunch of pedophiles and a bunch of sodomites and all these people into church. They don't like that. But do you know that that preaching stems from a doctrine found in the Word of God that we believe called the doctrine of, of, uh, of being a reprobate? So, so you'll notice that it is doctrine. See, it is doctrine, the set of beliefs, the things that we believe from the Word of God that make us who we are, and they sometimes even make our enemies, that they might destroy him, the Bible says, for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. Go to Luke chapter 4. You're there in Mark. Just flip one uh, book over. Luke chapter 4, look verse 31. Luke chapter 4, verse 31. And you may have never noticed the emphasis on doctrine in the ministry of Christ. But Jesus taught a lot of doctrine. Luke chapter 4 and verse 31, the Bible says this, And he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were, notice, astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with power. The same idea there that we saw in Matthew 7, that he taught them as one having authority. And the point is this, you say, why should I care about doctrine? Well, you should care about doctrine because Jesus cared about doctrine. And if it mattered to Jesus, it should matter to us. And when we talk about doctrine, maybe you say, I don't even know what doctrine is. Doctrine is the truth, the beliefs that we believe about uh, uh, from the Bible. And in this series, and again, I, we, we have, there are so many doctrines. I don't know that we'll cover every little doctrine that the Bible uh, mentions. I don't know that we can do that. We're definitely going to hit the major doctrines, but we're going to talk about things like the doctrine of the Word of God. We're going to definitely talk about things like the doctrine of salvation and eternal security. We'll talk about things like the doctrines of the end times. We'll talk about uh, things like the doctrines of uh, church, uh, uh, of the local New Testament church, and of laying on of hands, and of eternal judgment. We're going to look at the major doctrines throughout the uh, Bible systematically, spend uh, several uh, weeks going through and learning doctrine. But tonight, I want to teach you about doctrine and the importance of doctrine, and kind of just help you understand 
what we're talking about as we go into this series. So here's what I like to do. I want to give you three thoughts in regards to doctrine. The first thought is this. I want you to understand the types of doctrine. Because understanding the types of doctrine helps you understand why we must spend time learning doctrine. Now, there are two types of doctrines, as far as I can tell, in Scripture. And uh, this is a basic thing, but uh, I want you to see it. The first one is, there is what the Bible calls sound doctrine. We would call that biblical doctrine, good doctrine, the right type of doctrine. Are you there in, uh, you're there in Luke. Go to John, if you would. John chapter number 7. You're in Luke, so you're going to just flip one book over, Matthew, Mark, Luke. John, John chapter 7, and look at verse number 16. John chapter 7 and verse 16, the Bible says this, Jesus answered them, answered them and said, now again, notice the emphasis that Jesus has in his ministry with doctrine. Notice what he says. He says, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me, referring to God the Father. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. And I want you to notice that Jesus said, look, the doctrine that I teach, it's not mine. It's not a doc doctrines that I made up or things that I made up. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. And right doctrine and good doctrine and real doctrine comes from God and comes from the word of God. Go to Titus chapter number two. Now, if you kept your place in Hebrews, I ask you to keep your place in Hebrews. If you kept your place in Hebrews, continue to keep your place in Hebrews, but go with me from there uh, if you just head backwards to the book of Titus. So if you go backwards from Hebrews, you've got Philemon, and then you have the book of Titus. Keep your place in Hebrews. We're going to come back to it. But from Hebrews, you can go backwards, Philemon, and Titus. So let me just show you some examples of what the Bible refers to as sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Now, the word sound means competent. It means reliable. It means something you can trust. If it's sound, it's something you can put your faith in, you can put your trust in. Uh, Titus chapter number two, and look at verse number one. Notice what the Bible says. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Notice verse seven, same chapter, Titus two and verse seven. And all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. Now this is Paul telling Titus, this is how I want you to live your life. I want you to have a pattern of good works. I want people to be able to see your life and take a pattern from it. And then he says, specifically, here's how I want you to do it. In doctrine, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness. So he tells, Paul is telling Titus, he says, when you teach doctrine, when you preach doctrine, I want you to make sure that it's not corrupted, uncorrupted. The word corrupt means dishonest, lacking integrity, not being true, not being sound. He says, look, make sure your doctrine, Titus, is uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy, you're there in Titus, just flip one backwards into the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy is right before Titus. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse number 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. Notice what the Bible says. For the time will come. And this, of course, speaking of the end times. And I believe this is a time that you and I live in today. For the time will come when they will not endure, notice these words, sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. So notice, what's a doctrine? A doctrine is a truth that comes from the Word of God, that comes from God, that comes from His Word. That is sound doctrine. So when we're talking about the types of doctrines, number one, you have to realize that there is sound doctrine. There is doctrine that is reliable, doctrine that comes from the Word of God. But just the fact that the Bible mentions that there is a such thing as sound doctrine should give you the idea that there is another type of doctrine that is not sound. And this is mentioned in Scripture as well. You're there in 2 Timothy Flip back to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Just right before 2 Timothy, you have 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and look at verse 1. So we're talking about the types of doctrine, all right? And maybe you're taking notes on this. There will be a test at the end of the semester. I'm just kidding. Um, but we do need your tuition. No, no, I'm just joking. The types of doctrine. If you're taking notes, the types of doctrines, you've got, number one, sound doctrine. Then you've got, number two, what you could refer to as satanic doctrine or what the Bible refers to as strange doctrine. Are you there in 1 Timothy 4? Look at verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, don't miss it, and doctrines of devils. So there's sound doctrine that comes from God the Father, that comes from the Word of God, but then there's satanic doctrine. 
the doctrines of devils. Because here's what you need to understand. Satan and the devil, he is a, he is a religious being. Sometimes people think like, oh, the devil's against religion. The, the devil is more religious than you can imagine. The Bible says that he is uh, transformed into a minister of light, that he is an angel of light. And he's got his religions out there. He's got his churches out there with their false doctrine, with their satanic doctrine, with their strange doctrine. Go to Hebrews chapter 13. If you kept your place in Hebrews, go back to Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13 and look at verse number 8. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. The Bible says this, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And here's what I think is interesting. The verse I actually want you to look at is verse 9. But I read verse 8 because I want you to understand that verse 9 is put in the context of verse 8. Verse 9 talks about doctrine, but verse 8 tells us, look, Jesus Christ does not change. He is the same yesterday and today and forever, and so is his doctrine. So there was a time, there was a time when every church stood up and preached against homosexuality and nobody batted an eye. Now things have changed. Now you get up and, and say the things that we say and the beliefs, and I'm not preaching about that tonight, but I'm just using it as an example. Now people say, I can't believe that you would say that. But look, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed his mind on what he believes. He doesn't change his mind on what he thinks. The Bible hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. Notice verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse. What does that mean? Different types with diverse and strange doctrines. So notice the Bible teaches that there are two types of doctrines. There's sound doctrine. There's strange doctrine. There's a doctrine that comes from the Father, and there's a doctrine that comes from the devil. There's a doctrine that comes from the Word of God, and there's a doctrine that comes from false religion. And what I think is interesting is that sometimes we get wound up with this idea about being able to refute false religion, and I'm sure there's a place for that, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I preached a whole sermon, a whole sermon series early in our ministry when we were still in the house. I preached a series called Exposing False Religions, and we went through, and I did a sermon on Catholics and on Mormons and on Jehovah's Witnesses and on Seventh-day Adventists or whatever, and maybe we'll do that again someday. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but you know, instead of getting all caught up and you say, ah, to go soul winning, I don't know, what if I meet? some, you know, snake handling Pentecostal? Am I going to know every little thing about them? Here's the thing. You don't need to know every little thing about false doctrine. You know what you need to know is sound doctrine. Amen. If you understand good doctrine, if you understand right doctrine, if you understand what the Bible actually teaches in regards to truth, then when you hear false doctrine, you'll be able to know that that's strange. That's different. That's diverse. That is not what the Bible teaches. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Towards the end of the New Testament there, you have the book of Revelation. Then you've got Jude right before it. Then you've got 3rd, 2nd, and 1st John. 1 John chapter 4. Notice verse number 1. And this is really what this series is about. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says this, Beloved, 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Like everybody that comes to your door with a Bible does not mean that they're a good person. Does not mean that they're teaching good doctrine, they're teaching the truth. Every TV preacher, every radio preacher, every guy with a camera on YouTube, and look, we're we're on YouTube and we've been on TV and we've you know we'll go on the radio if they'll let me or whatever. There's no, you know, I'm not saying that everybody out there is bad, but please realize that just because they come to you with a Bible doesn't mean it's good. Amen. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. You need to try the spirits. You need to check them up against the word of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And you say, well, how do I know if there's a false prophet? I'm listening to this guy on the radio. I'm watching this guy on YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm watching this guy on TV. How do I know if he's a bad guy? Well, if you know doctrine, do you understand? If you know the doctrine of salvation... That salvation is by grace through faith. It's not of works. It's not, you don't earn it. If you know that and you hear somebody say, well, you got to live a good life and you got to be willing to repent, you got to do this and that, then you know, based on their doctrine, that they're a false prophet. If you know the doctrine of eternal security, that we are secure in Christ, that we are sealed until the day of redemption, that we can't lose our salvation, and somebody says, well, you can walk away from it, you know you're dealing with a false uh, prophet. You say, well, how do I know? Based on their doctrine. And the problem is, the problem is that today there's many Christians that don't even know what they believe. So we're going to help you with that. 
and try to teach you, go systematically through the Word of God and teach you and reinforce you on doctrine. And here's the promise I make to you. We're going to prove it to you from the Word of God. Because that's the only way that you can know what sound doctrine is. So what types of doctrines are there? There is sound doctrine, and there is strange doctrine. There is right doctrine, and there is demonic doctrine. But then let's talk about this. Go, go to John chapter 18, if you would. Towards the beginning of the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 18. Like I said, this is going to be very much a study and teaching. We'll try to make it applicable here at the end. But this is more about teaching you and helping you understand who we are and what we believe. So we begin with this idea, and if you're taking notes, the types of doctrine. What are they? Number one, there is sound doctrine. Number two, there is strange doctrine. Secondly, let's talk about this, the importance of doctrine. Why is doctrine important? Why do we even need doctrine? Why do we need to know doctrine? Why would, should we as a church even understand what doctrine is? Well, number one, because doctrine unites us. It is doctrine that brings us together. John 18, look at verse 19. John chapter 18 and verse 19, the Bible says this. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples. Now remember, Jesus was known for his doctrine, right? In fact, it was his doctrine that even led and helped in getting him destroyed and crucified. And here he's been arrested, and the high priest then asked Jesus. Notice, they ask him of his disciples and of his doctrine. Now, the reason that those are connected is because this, what makes you a disciple is your doctrine. You, if you are a New Testament believer and follower of Jesus Christ, then you have to get your doctrine from the Bible, from the New Testament, from the Word of God. If you say, well, I'm, I'm a disciple of the Mormon church, well, then you get your uh, doctrines from the Book of Mormon. If you're a disciple of Muhammad, then you get it from the Quran. And here he was taught and he was asked about his disciples and of his doctrine. Why? Because discipleship is connected to doctrine. In fact, if you take our discipleship course, you'll find that we just take you through a bunch of doctrines. Just fundamental doctrines that we think a new believer should know and understand. Why? Because that's what makes you a disciple. They asked him of his disciples and of his doctrine. Look at verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whether Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And I just want you to notice there that Jesus did not hide what he's believed. And by the way, neither do we. Amen. We're not ashamed. of Aren't you embarrassed? You know, some of you will disagree with. Look, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of, of the Bible. I'm ashamed of this world. I'm not ashamed of the Bible. If people think the world, the, the world thinks the Bible is crazy, well, guess what? The Bible thinks the world's crazy. Go to Acts chapter 2. You're there in John. Just flip over one book to Acts chapter 2. You say, why is doctrine important? Well, first of all, because of the fact that it is doctrine that unites us. It is doctrine. That unites. I'm talking about Verity Baptist Church. I'm talking about this local assembly of believers right here. You know what unites us? You know what unites us? Doctrine. That's why we come together, right? I mean, I, I, I love our church. The, the Verity Baptist Church is the most diverse church I've ever been to. I mean, red and yellow, black and white, they're here. <laughs> and they're precious in His sight. And, you know, we have people at this church from all walks of life, from all sorts of social, economic uh, parts, you know, and, and places, and all sorts of different careers and, and different backgrounds and different parts of, of the city and even different parts of the state. And they all come together, these people. People, have you ever thought about the fact that there are people in this church that you're friends with that you would never be friends with? You would never even know them. You would never even get along with somebody like that if it wasn't for the doctrine that we believe. The doctrine that unites us. The doctrine that brings us together. Are you there in Acts 2? Look at verse 42. Acts 2, 42. We look at this verse a lot. I like it. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Notice what the Bible says about the New Testament church when it first began there in Jerusalem. Acts 2, 42. And they continued. I like that. I love that word. They continued. I hope, I hope that'll be one of your, I hope that word is in your winning statement for the Christian life. I just continued. And they continued steadfastly, notice, in the apostles, what? Doctrine. Now, oftentimes we come here and we emphasize and fellowship. And there's nothing wrong with that. Good, good on fellowship. But you know what? Before you get to the fellowship, you need the doctrine. 
It is a doctrine that unites us. It is what we believe that what we believe that brings us together. So therefore, doctrine is important. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. You're there in the book of Acts. You're going to go Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. I get an email probably every other week uh, from the Pastoral Association in Sacramento inviting me to come to their prayer breakfast and inviting me to come and whatever. I don't think they know who I am because I think if they showed up, you know, they'd change the name. <laughs> they'd change the location, lock the doors. You know, but I get these invited and it's all these, you know, neo-evangelical, community church, church of Christ, Lutherans, Catholics. They all just, all these, pa the pastoral associations, all these people come together. They go to different churches. They'll go to Capitol Christian Center. They go to the Catholic Church or whatever. They'll meet once a month and they'll pray and they'll have breakfast and they'll do this and they'll do that. You say, Pastor, do you show up to those things? No, you know what? I don't show up to those things. You say, why? Because of the doctrine. Because I'm just, I'm just not going to sit there and fellowship with a baby sprinkler. It's just, a doc it's just a difference in doctrine. They believe that you got to get baptized to be saved. I don't believe that, and here's the point. The point is this. It is a doctrine that unites us. It is the doctrine that brings us together. You say, well, what is the purpose? What is the importance of doctrine? The importance of doctrine is that that's what unites us as a church. Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 13. Ephesians 4, 13, the Bible says this. Till we all come, notice these words, in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. See, it is doctrine. The Bible says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge. It is the doctrine, what we believe, the truths that we get from the Word of God that unite us. Go to Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians 1. Keep your place right there in Ephesians. We're going to come right back to it. So please make sure you keep your finger right there. But go to Philippians chapter number 1. Now, let me go ahead and say this and just give this disclaimer. I'm not saying that every person that, you know, you hang out with has to be doctrinally with you 100%. We understand that even, in, even here, we're not all 100% just believe every little thing. But look, it is doctrine. It is the major doctrines of the Word of God that brings us together, that unites us, especially in a local church setting. This is why we don't allow, we do, we do not allow people to come into this church. Now, they can visit. They can come and partake and be part. If somebody comes in here and says, I don't know what I believe about the King James Bible, hey, no problem. But you want to become a member of this church, you better figure out what you believe about the King James Bible because we believe the King James Bible is the inspired, preserved, infallible Word of God. Amen. You understand that? It is, it is doctrine that, you not, I don't know what I believe about eternal security. Well, you can come and visit and, and, and take part, and we'll try to get you saved and help you understand it. But you want to be a part of Verity Baptist Church, you better believe eternal security because it is the doctrine that brings us together. Are you there in Philippians 1? Look at verse 27. Philippians 1, 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, notice what he says, Philippians 1, 27, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast, Notice, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. You say, how do we come together as a church? We come together, we unite over doctrine. So what is it? What's the importance of doctrine? Well, doctrine, first of all, unites us. But I want you to notice, secondly, and if you kept your place in Ephesians, I'd like you to go back there. Not only does doctrine unite us, but doctrine matures us. It is doctrine that helps us grow. Or maybe I should say this way. It is the doctrine we believe, we understand, that shows our growth. Are there in Ephesians 4? Look at verse 13. Notice what the Bible says. We already saw this part. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Notice. Unto a perfect man. The word perfect means mature, complete, fully grown. He says, look, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, notice verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children. He says, look, we want to come, become a perfect man, a mature man, a complete man. We want to grow in the Lord unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We don't want to be any more children, that we henceforth be no more children. How do you know who's a child? Notice, Taz to and fro and carried about with every wind, don't miss it, of doctrine. 
You say, what, what shows your maturity? What shows your maturity is that you're not just, you know, just going here and going, well, I heard this guy on the radio, and he said uh, I, that he doesn't, he's not sure about eternal security. And I don't know. Well, why don't you figure it out? Why don't you quit listening to people and just read the Bible and figure out what the Bible says? Figure out what the Word of God says. See, it is doctrine not only that unites us, but it is doctrine that matures us. And when you learn doctrine, and when you understand doctrine, and when you uh, 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 have the knowledge of Christ, then we are henceforth no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every different wind of doctrine. And see, we, we, we become, to the best of our ability, like the Lord Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's the goal. Look, the goal is not for you to change what you believe about major doctrines 10 years from now. The goal is not for you to say, oh, well, you know, I used to believe that about the Trinity, now I'm not sure what I believe. The goal is not for you, well, I don't know what I think about the reference. I used to think this, now I think that. We don't want to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. You don't want to be carried about with every influence. Well, now they're saying this, now she's saying that, now he's saying this. Look, why don't you figure out what you believe and just stand there? I don't just figure out, well, here's what the Bible says, here's what the Word of God says. If it's good enough for the Bible, it's good enough for me. See, it is doctrine that unites us, and it is doctrine that matures us. And let me say this, it is doctrine that protects us. Go to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. In the beginning of the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, look at verse 38. Mark chapter 12 and verse 38. Mark 12, 38. And see, it's not enough for you to know what you believe. One of the purposes of this series is that you not only know what you believe, but you know why you believe it. That's why I want you to bring, bring take notes on Sunday nights. I want you to take notes all the time, but definitely take notes on Sunday nights while we're going through the series. In fact, maybe spend, invest a 99 cents and get you a notebook. And, and show up with a notebook and a pen on Sunday nights. If you don't have a baby sitting on your lap, we understand that. And, and jot some notes down. Because, look, it's not enough for you to say, well, you know, what do you believe about, you know, somebody asks you at, at work or some friend or some coworker or some neighbor or some family, what do you believe about X, Y, and Z? Or you're like, you know, this is the wrong answer. Well, pastor says, wrong answer. Are you a follower of pastor? Or are you a follower of the Word of God? How about this? The Word of God says. Well, the Bible, why do you believe that about the, the, the homosexuals? Well, let me show you what the Bible says. Well, I saw in the LA Times that your pastor, forget about my pastor, let me show you what the Bible says. You know why I'm united to my pastor? Because we believe the same doctrine. It comes from the Word of God. That comes from the Bible. So what does a mature Christian say? What does a mature Christian believe? Here's what a mature Christian believes. They bring pressure to you to change. And you say, well, here's the thing. I know what I believe based on what the Bible says. I made a decision on what I believe based on what the Bible says. And I'm not going to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. So doctrine unites us, doctrine matures us, but doctrine protects us. Mark 12, 38. And he said unto them, in his doctrine. So notice, in his doctrine, he taught this. Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace. And he goes on and describes them and preaches about them. But notice, in his doctrine... He told them, hey, beware of the scribes. Beware of the scribes. Why? Because doctrine protects us. Doctrine will protect us, and doctrine will protect this church. Go to Romans chapter 16. We've seen this recently, but I'd like you to see it again. You're there in Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans chapter 16. Romans 16 and verse number 17. Romans 16 and verse 17. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. The Bible says this. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the, don't miss it, doctrine, which ye have learned, and avoid them. You know the Bible, there's a passage in the Bible on church discipline about marking and avoiding, identifying and throwing out people who come into this church and try to cause divisions based on the doctrine that we believe. Say, so why would God do that? Here's why. Because doctrine is important. Why? Because it unites us, because it matures us, because it protects us. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm not sure if I asked you to keep your place in 1 Timothy. I meant to.
But if you can find all the T books, they're all clustered together. First, Second Timothy, excuse me, First, Second Thessalonians, First, Second Timothy, and Titus, they're all clustered together. The rest of the passages, we're going to look at several passages. We're going to look at all of them in First, Second Timothy, and Titus. So if you can find the T books, they're all clustered together. I'm teaching you about doctrine tonight, and I'm explaining to you why you should show up on Sunday nights to learn about doctrine. And the reason we want to learn about doctrine is because there's two types of doctrines. There's sound doctrine, there's strange doctrine. There's sound doctrine, there's satanic doctrine. And the importance of doctrine is this. Doctrine unites us, doctrine matures us, and doctrine protects us. Here's kind of the third section, the third heading I'd like you to understand. And I always try to end sermons like this, and it's the application of doctrine. How do we apply this to our lives? What are we supposed to do with doctrine? Well, number one, we should learn doctrine. 1 Timothy 4, look at verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 13. Till I come, give attendance. The word attendance means to pay attention to, to, to give attention to reading. Now, recently I preached a sermon on Bible reading, and I applied this to Bible reading, and that definitely is part of it. But notice, he also says to give attention to exhortation. That's what we're doing tonight. When you show up and uh, somebody preaches to you, they're exhorting you, they're preaching to you. And then he says this, to doctrine. You ought to give attendance to doctrine. That's what the Bible says. You ought to learn doctrine. You ought to give attention to doctrine. 1 Timothy 4, look at verse 16. Same chapter, just go down a couple of verses. Notice what Paul says. He says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. And then he says this, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. He says, look, you need to take heed unto thyself and you take heed unto the doctrine. He says you need to give attendance to doctrine. You need to learn doctrine. So on Sunday nights, we're going to learn doctrine. We're going to learn biblical doctrine. Some of it's going to be super interesting. Some of it might be basic, but it's good for you to just hear it and hear it and be reminded and and, and learn it and have verses and have cross-references and know, hey, here's what I believe about this and here's why. So we should learn doctrine. But secondly, we should proclaim doctrine. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6, the Bible says this. If thou put the brethren, if thou put the brethren, this is Paul speaking to Timothy, who's a up-and-coming preacher, a, a young man's being trained for the ministry, he's a pastor. He says, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things. You say, ah, pastor, I don't want to show up and listen to a sermon on eternal security. Well, you know what the Bible says, that if thou put the brethren in remembrance on these things, thou shalt be, this is what the Bible says to me, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So look, yeah, you need, you, we need to hear, you need to hear another sermon on the doctrine of the Word of God. You need to hear another sermon on, now some of it's going to be interesting when we get into end times doctrine. I'm sure that'll be super interesting to many of you who maybe haven't learned it or studied it. We're going to look at the end times and the timeline and all that stuff. But look, anytime you open up the Word of God, it should be interesting to us because it's doctrine. Because it is the doctrine of the Word of God, and it's good for us to hear it, to be reminded. It's good for us to, uh, to be able to uh, uh, keep it in our hearts and have it ready it should be something that we proclaim. 2 Timothy 3. You're there in 1 Timothy. Flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want you to notice that not only should we learn doctrine, but then we should proclaim doctrine. And look, this is important to me because today churches are the opposite of this. Most churches you go to, they try to hide their doctrine from you. They don't want you to know what they believe. Which, by the way, that's why they give themselves names like you know, New Life Church, you know, something worship center, real life. Well, what does that even mean? You know, and then you look them up in the yellow pages and they're under Assemblies of God, tongue speaking, Pentecostal, you know. You look them up in the yellow pages, oh, the Capital Christian Center, you know, Capital Christian Center, we're just a center for Christians. And it's like Assemblies of God, tongue speaking Pentecostals. Hey, that's important, isn't it? All right, you, you look them up, you know, Crossroads. And it's like Church of the Nazarene. Hey, here's what I'm telling you. Most churches today, they hide for you. They hide from you what they believe. Why? Because doctrine is divisive. Because it might offend you. Because you might be like, no, that's weird. 
rolling around, slobbering, and speaking in tongues, whatever. But you know, the Bible says that we should proclaim our doctrine. We're not ashamed of our doctrine. We put it on our website. We tell people about it. We preach it. We teach it. We all do a whole series on it. Why? Because we should proclaim our doctrine. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10. But thou hast fully, notice what Paul said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Thou hast fully known my doctrine. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. And you know, by the, end of, by the end of this Sunday night series, I hope that we'll be able to say, that I'll be able to say to you, and that we'll be able to say as a church to the world, hey, thou hast fully known my doctrine. We didn't hide anything. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16, same chapter, just go down a few verses there. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. For what? For doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. But notice, doctrine. The Word of God is good for doctrine. It'll teach us it's profitable for doctrine. 2 Timothy 4 verse 1, notice what Paul told Timothy. He said, hey, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. 1 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. Preach the Bible. Be instant in season, out of season. What does that mean? He says, don't be carried about with every wind of doctrine. Don't worry about whether it's popular or not. You just preach the word. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and, don't miss it, doctrine. We need doctrine. We need to proclaim doctrine. You don't have to turn there. In fact, I'd like you to go to 1 Timothy. You're there in 2 Timothy. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1. But I'll read for you from Acts 5, 27 and 28. The Bible says, And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. I want you to notice that the New Testament church, they weren't just preaching the gospel. And I'm all for preaching the gospel. I'm big into soul winning, going out in the community, knocking doors. But look, we don't want to just fill this community with the gospel. We want to fill this community with our doctrine. Do you understand that? We want everyone in this community to know. We want everyone in this community to know that there is a church that believes in salvation by grace, through faith, not of works. You must call upon Jesus in faith. Once you have it, you can't lose it. But you know what? We also want this church to know, that there's uh, this community to know, that what we believe about the King James Bible. Amen. What we believe about it. We're not hiding anything. We, we want to fill Jerusalem with, we want to fill Sacramento with our doctrine. Because doctrine should be learned. And doctrine should be proclaimed. And thirdly, we should defend doctrine. 1 Timothy 1, look at verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, that thou mightest charge some, notice, that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Notice, he, gave, he said, I, I want to charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Titus chapter 1 and verse 9, you're there in 1 Timothy, you go 2 Timothy and Titus. Titus chapter 1 and verse 9. Titus chapter 1 and verse 9, the Bible says this. Titus 1, 9, holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught, that he may be able by, notice, sound doctrine, both to exhort, the word exhort means to urge, advise, caution, and to convince. The word convince means to persuade by argument or evidence. The gainsayer. What's a gainsayer? Someone who denies, disputes, opposes. Did you catch that? He said there are people out there who are gainsayers, who deny what we believe, who oppose what we believe who dispute what we believe. And we should be able, by holding fast the faithful word, the word of God, we should be able, as we have been taught, we should be able to buy sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer. Why? Because sometimes doctrine needs to be defended. Earnestly contend for the faith. The word faith there is a reference to our beliefs, our doctrine. So what's the application? Why learn about doctrine? Here's why. Because you need to learn doctrine. And you need to proclaim doctrine. And you need to defend 
doctrine. Doctrine <laughs> is important. It's, it's why Verity Baptist Church exists. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. We started Verity Baptist Church. You want to know why? For its doctrine. You know that I could find, you know, when my wife and I, before we went into ministry, I could have found a church that was a good church that went soul We were in a good church that went soul winning and provided our needs. But you know what Sacramento needed? It needed a church that believed these doctrines, that stood for these doctrines, that proved the doctrines that you and I believe, the things that we hold near and dear. It needed these doctrines. It's what unites us. It's what matures us. It's what protects us. So I want to encourage you. Over the next several weeks, several, many weeks, and I don't know how many weeks, there's so many doctrines, so many uh, important doctrines, but we're going to take time. We're going to systematically go through the Bible and just learn doctrine. Why? Because doctrine is important. Now, next week, next week, I'm going to be, begin, and this was kind of an introductory sermon, but I'm going to begin next week with the doctrine of Revelation. Now, I want you to understand, we're not talking about the book of Revelation. That's a different series. That's a Wednesday night Bible study, all right? One day we'll go through the book of Revelation verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We're not talking about the book of Revelation or, or, or end times. We're talking about the doctrine of Revelation, how God reveals himself to man. And this is an important doctrine because it sets us up for the doctrine of the Word of God. But it'll also answer a question for you, because sometimes people will ask this question. They'll say, well, what about that guy, you know, in the uh, Amazon who's never heard the gospel? What about that guy in Africa who's never heard the, Af the gospel? Well, you know, people who ask that question or are confused about this question are, don't know the answer to that question because they don't understand the doctrine of revelation. So next week, we're going to dig in and begin just a systematic study going through the Bible, just learning the doctrines, the major doctrines of the Word of God. I hope you'll join us. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your Word. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the fact that you've given us every answer and all the answers that we need. And Lord, I pray that you would help us. Help us, Lord, to realize that there is importance in doctrine, that doctrine unites us and it matures us and it protects us. And Lord, help us to rally around doctrine and help us to learn about doctrine. Lord, I pray that you would help our Sunday night services to be services where we will learn doctrine and mature and grow in our faith. We love you. In the matchless name of Christ, we pray. Amen.